guys, welcome back to my kitchen. I am so excited for today's video because it is almost Christmas. And I personally love Christmas, but even if you don't celebrate Christmas, you can just be cheery and jolly and wonderful because it's winter, unless you live in Australia, in which I think it's like especially hot this time of year. I don't know, I went to alternative learning. I don't really understand anything about geography or like the equator or anything like that. All I know is that it's almost Christmas time. So today we are making a gingerbread layer cake. And when I say that I went like above and beyond on this, like yesterday, I like stayed up late making miniature gingerbread houses to put on top of the cake. It's about to get a amazingly wonderful and I'm wearing my flannel so you know it's Christmas time. So I first started off by taking my three six inch round cake pans and I put my little parchment liners on the inside and sprayed them with baking spray. So I recommend using six inches because they're just like, they're petite and cute, which is not me because I am like large and in charge. So I just like project it in other parts of my life. So into this large bowl, I'm gonna start by adding my flour. And then we're gonna add all of our gingerbread-like spices. There are a lot of them. And there's also espresso powder in this, which I think is cool because it kind of adds a different note and it brings out all of the other flavors, which is why you put it in. But I'll have all the exact ingredients listed down below because honestly, the only thing I can pick out in here is cinnamon. Amazing. Now I'm just gonna whisk this together until there's no more obvious clumps of like, yo, hey, is that nutmeg? Also, every time I hear the word nutmeg, I think someone's talking to me, even though my name's not nut and my name's not even Meg. It's just like the Megan part of nutmeg. I don't know. As a kid, it was my favorite spice just because of that. Now we're gonna move on to the standing mixer. So I'm gonna clear the thought of the way. Into my standing mixer, I'm going to put some room temperature butter. Will it slide out? Yeah, it did. And then my sugars. I've got white sugar and brown sugar because we don't discriminate here. And that's what the recipe calls for. And I'm gonna cream it together until it's all light and fluffy. And now we're gonna speed this up because it gets ridiculously loud. And I'm also gonna lock this so I don't slam my finger into it and chop the top of my finger off like I did in that time I made the s'mores cupcakes. So now that that's creamed together, I'm just going to turn the mixer on low and then I'm going to slowly add in my molasses and my two eggs. But you're not gonna be able to hear me because you know, it's loud and stuff, so I thought I would tell you beforehand. Now it's time to add the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients. We're gonna start with some dry. Mix that in, then we'll add some more water, then we'll do this again until it's like fully combined. But I would do it in like three little times, turns, things, unless you're pressed for time, in which I would say to you, why are you making a layer cake? I'm gonna take this off the standing mixer. And I'm just gonna fold in to make sure everything fully gets combined. You don't want to over mix it because <laughs> if you watch Cupcake Wars, you know Florian always says over mixed batter develops the gluten and then just makes it like chewy like bread. And we want cake, not bread. Okay, now it's time to put these into our cake layers or the pants, cake pants. Now that the batter is done, I'm just going to place it into my, I almost call these cupcake tins. Now that my batter is done, I'm gonna put them into the cake pans. And again, I'm using this to make the batter or the layers even. I don't scoop like perfectly large ones, but like, I don't know. I just feel like it makes them a little more even. Cause you don't want like one layer to be like the fat kid, AKA me growing up. You want them all to look the same. I mean, that really doesn't promote like a good <laughs> positive. You know what? I'm just gonna. <laughs> now I'm just gonna take a knife and smooth out the tops. I'm now gonna pop these into the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. I don't know if I said before, but it's preheated to 350 degrees. We're gonna bake these and your house is gonna smell like a Hallmark movie. Like one of those like Lacey Chabay, Chabert, Chabert. The girl from Mean Girls, Gretchen Wieners, she's in a lot of Christmas movies. I've seen almost all of them. It's gonna smell like what that movie smells like when you watch it. Just go <laughs> put it in the oven. So for the frosting, I'm gonna be doing a whipped cream style of frosting, but it's not just like plain old whipped cream because we have some different ingredients in here. So I'm just gonna pop all of this in my standing mixer, but this time it has a whisk attachment. So we've got sour cream, vanilla, heavy whipping cream, brown sugar, and powdered sugar. We're just gonna put this all in a bowl and then we're gonna whip it up. 
now I'm gonna add in about a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. This is like super concentrated vanilla extract and it has the little flex, which just makes it look like rustic in a good way. Not like rustic when you like fucked up and you like feel bad and you're like, oh, it's rustic. No, like intentionally rustic. Oh, I made a mess. Oh. Now we're just gonna whip this all together. I have a piping bag that I've just sat in this like giant mason jar, which is how I like to fill when I'm doing frosting and things like that, just cause it's easy and you don't have to like, this is how antisocial people bake. That's how you do it. And now we're going to put this in here. I'm honestly gonna leave this in here for now cause now I'm gonna move on to leveling the cakes and then we're going to assemble and then we get to my favorite part, which is decorating it and then taking pictures for Instagram. It's my most favorite part, but. So I took the cakes out of the oven, I cooled them, then I popped them in the freezer and I wrapped them in saran wrap and then I stick them in like Ziploc freezer bags. And now I've kind of like taken it out so it's cool and a little easier to work with. So we're about to transform this three layer cake into a six layer cake without having to actually make six layers of cake. You just cut it in half, right? I wish you could do it with money. You just like cut a dollar bill in half and it's $2. I'm using my favorite cake leveling thing. If you're really advanced, you could totally use like a knife, but I'm a little clumsy. Now what I'm gonna do, you basically just put this on flat, hold the top and you just like shimmy it, let it do a little bit of a dance. And we're taking the top part off because we want these layers to be flat, like my boobs. And now you can leave this top part aside. You can give it to a friend to eat. You can eat it yourself, but don't forget you have a six layer cake coming your way, so. Now that the top part is completely flat, I'm gonna go through and put this back down to like a nine or whatever, or like the lowest one. And we're just gonna slice it in half. Obviously slicing it in half is optional, but six layers are so much more impressive. Look at this. How cute is this? Like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. Oh, I just stabbed it with my thumb. We're gonna set this aside and then we're gonna just start by assembling it. So excited. Now it's time to assemble the cake. I have the frosting in the piping bag and I'm just gonna put a little dollop on the middle of my little cake turner, which I'm pretty sure my cake turner's broken. I mean, not pretty sure. Like I know my cake turner's broken, but hmm, which one do I wanna start with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna start with one that's got like a super flat bottom that was baked and then we're going to put it here. leave your cake like this or you go above and beyond and you could make mini gingerbread houses to go on top. I bought a gingerbread house cookie cutter on Amazon. Again, that's where I get everything in my entire life. I'll link it down below if you guys care. And then I made little Christmas trees. Oh my God, don't be stuck. And then a bunch of little houses. Okay guys, that is it. This is your gingerbread layer cake adorned with a house and trees and beautiful nakedness of the cake. I am very happy with it. I think it looks really cute. This actually is not too hard. It's not like one of those cakes you see on Instagram that you're like, yeah, I could never do that. So it's gonna be pretty easy. So if you guys make it, I wanna see you do it with pictures and tweets and stuff. So use the hashtag baking with Megan so I can see it and stock your Instagram feeds and then like scroll through and like like really old pictures of you and then have you be like really creeped out. Just like what I wanna do. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up and yeah, I will see you guys next time. You can bring it to a party. You can eat it all by yourself. Whatever you do, just make it. It's cute. Is it just me or have I worn this sweater in like my last nine YouTube videos? Laziness at its finest. Starring me. <gasps>